The Internet of Things is growing exponentially, with the demand for security and connectivity growing alongside it. But the infrastructure connecting these devices is slow, unsecure, and centralized. Nodal is tackling this by turning smartphones into an Internet of Things gateway. In the last 24 hours, over 80 million IoT devices have connected to over 4.5 million smartphones on the network. Nodal started on Stellar, but moved to Polkadot Substrate last year because Stellar doesn't have the flexibility or scaling to go beyond the 1.4 million transactions per day that Nodal was doing. They are one of the first main nets already live on Substrate and have a very, very high probability of getting a parachain. Nodal will be huge. We're lucky to be here early, now let's jump in. Welcome to DeFi Now, I'm Josh Cross, and if you like what I'm sharing and you don't wanna miss out on all this glorious, time-sensitive content, make sure to subscribe and join us. Also, if you wanna hear about amazing projects like this before I make a video on them and wanna be a part of the official DeFi Now Explorers group, pick up an Explorer NFT linked in the description. You can also watch the end of my previous video on Bondly, where I went into the detail of the Explorers group. Nodal is a decentralized wireless network for the Internet of Things with the mission of becoming the largest wireless network on Earth to connect the next trillion devices. Let me give you an example of how it works. A shipping company has an IoT device on their pallets that measures temperature and vibration. This way they can prove that during the entire shipping process, the goods remained within a safe temperature range and were never mishandled. This device isn't connected to the internet, but instead it transmits a low energy Bluetooth signal. Whenever this device is within Bluetooth range of a smartphone running the Nodal app, it sends all this information to it. The phone will either immediately transmit the information via cell signal, or it will wait till it's connected to Wi-Fi and send the data over the internet to the validator nodes. And they could also send location data for tracking the shipment trustlessly. Validator nodes run the nodal blockchain. The smartphones are the edge nodes that feed data to the validators. The validators receive data from all these edge nodes and add it to the nodal blockchain where the shipping company can access it. The data is encrypted end to end so it remains private and secure so only the shipping company can access it. The shipping company is the subscriber that will pay a fee to the validators, and the validators share revenue with edge nodes. So as a contributor running the Nodal app, you can earn cryptocurrency just for walking around while your device passively runs the network. You earn from revenue sharing and also from mining new tokens. So edge nodes are contributors who help run the network, but this isn't limited to people who download the app from the app store. To be a contributor, a device only needs to run the Nodal SDK and have occasional internet access. Contributors can be individuals, app developers, hardware manufacturers, or other IoT devices that already have internet access. As we move more into a post-advertising world, I definitely see Nodal or something similar running in the background while you're using a given app. That way the app developer gets paid for their work and you don't need to see obnoxious ads. It's a win-win. Or a phone manufacturer builds this into the hardware of their phones and can sell their phones much cheaper because each one is monetizing for them after you buy it. This is kind of like HTC did with the Exodus that came pre-installed with Nodal, only in that case, the phones went to the phone user. Now, imagine if Google, Apple, or Samsung pre-installed Nodal and connected it to their own wallets. That way they'd be able to significantly drop the price of their phones by running Nodal in the background when you're not using it. This could give them a huge competitive advantage and benefit the users with cheaper phones. Nodal runs without collecting any of your own data. Nodal doesn't collect phone numbers, names, contacts, pictures, or any personally identifiable information from their edge nodes. Their focus on privacy and security is a big, fat, huge plus. Once you authorize the Nodal SDK on your device, it will quietly run in the background without causing a noticeable impact to battery or performance. One last note there is that this isn't limited to one-way data communication. These connections can also be used to transmit data back to the IoT device, to update it for example. Going forward, this can also be used to send micropayments. Imagine all the share scooters and bikes in cities parking at charging stations and automatically paying the property owner for the electricity and space usage. Or picture this, you're late for work, so your smart car sends micropayments to other cars to bribe them to get out of the way and let you pass. The white paper lists 19 different commercial use cases, so if you're interested, you should definitely go check that out. The website link is in the description.
The nodal network can transfer any kind of data through any kind of current or future wireless network for any use case. Now let's talk about how their partners are using this. The city of Paris implemented smart benches in kiosks all over the city. When people download the Paris City app and they're near these devices, they're asked to answer a survey about that specific area, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, so city managers can track how many people are using various parts of the city and how they can improve it. Cisco Meraki is one of the largest wireless access point providers in the world, and they're using Nodal to extend their IoT coverage outside of facilities for device tracking, among other things. Meraki tracks devices within 200 feet of their access points, and then they use Nodal to extend the coverage to the extra 4.5 million active edge nodes. Constellation Brands, a Fortune 500 company, added Bluetooth trackers to thousands of advertising displays. Using Nodal through the Meraki API, they get hourly updates on where these displays are located. They can see if their presentations are in storage or on the floor of this store as intended and make sure that they're getting their money's worth. Avnet partnered with Nodal for the M1 smart wearable for COVID contact tracing last year. This device will buzz when employees move within six feet of one another and it works without a smartphone. If someone at the company tests positive, HR departments can alert anyone who has been near the infected person. This is a way to get people safely back to the office. Nodal is already in conversations with governments and enterprises in the US and Europe with demand for several million of these M1 units. I asked Misha, the Nodal CEO, about their Ledger partnership because I couldn't find much on it, and he said they're working with Ledger to have their secure element manufactured into new IoT devices that require authentication or extra security. This would be especially important as IoT devices start transmitting micropayments. Ledger and Nodal on IoT, I love it. On top of all this, Nodal is partnered with Parity and Polkadot, Stellar, the Web3 Foundation, and Tangem, with many more partnerships that haven't been publicly announced yet. All right, on to the team. I spent a ton of time looking into the team and trying to find the best way to concisely share their experience. The Nodal team invented mobile mesh networks. They are the best in the world at networking devices directly with one another in a private, secure way. I'll cover the founders here as a start for you to do your own damn research. Misha Benoliel is a co-founder and CEO. He ran his own telecom businesses since the 90s and founded Open Garden, the software company that launched FireChat. FireChat was a decentralized messaging app used in the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong back in 2014. So the protesters could communicate directly with one another without needing cellular infrastructure. FireChat was the largest mesh network in the world until Nodal. Garrett Kinsman is the other co-founder. He dropped out of college to join FireChat, then moved to India to join the Ola Labs team, where he created OlaPlay, the largest ride-sharing network in the world, which received $1.2 billion in funding from SoftBank and Tencent. He then moved to the US to co-found Nodal. There are 12 team members total, plus some other engineers who contribute. Here's the token distribution. Nodal Cash has a fixed supply of 2.1 billion with about 850 million created at the token generation event. The rest will be mined over the next seven to 10 years. The actual amount in circulation when it lists will be much smaller than that 850 million. We don't have an official listing date, but that's why I'm making this video now so that you understand the project and you're ready when the news is released. This is a big project with some serious partners and a world-class team. So I expect all the top launch pads to want to do the public sale. The gold standards for Polkadot launch pads right now are Polka Starter and Duck Starter, and Ignition by Paid Network also looks promising, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it launch on one of those. In the meantime, you can just run the app and start earning Nodal. I've been running it all day now and I've made a whopping 0.003 Nodal cache, but that's probably because I've hardly left my studio during that time. I should probably get some sunlight. Nah, I'll see the sun in the bear market. Nodal's privacy and security focused approach is one of the things that I am most excited about. IoT devices are rarely updated, but with Nodal, they can be updated just by standing near them. All of the IoT data is encrypted and private, and they don't collect any personal data from anyone running the edge nodes. Super, super bullish on this one. And as always, not financial advice. Links to the Nodal site and social media are in the description, so check those out when you do your own damn research. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and hit like and subscribe while you're down there. Till next time, thanks so much for watching. Take care and keep exploring.